The Lord be with you. We welcome you to worship on this third weekend after the Epiphany. As we gather this evening, may the light of Christ and his word continue to shine upon us. We ask everyone to fill out the cards there in your pews, and after the service, you can leave those cards in the offering plates at the entrances to the church. I do have a couple of announcements, but before we do that, let's greet the folks around you. In our announcements, uh, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Cass City will host a seminar for teens and adults on Sunday or on Saturday, February 4th from 9 to 1 p.m. We have additional information in the bulletin this week about it. Um, and also right after that information is another uh, insert about the uh, Thumb Area Youth Gathering, which will also take place at Good Shepherd in Cass City on March 4th. The focus group meetings with the district in preparation for calling a second pastor will take place on Wednesday, February 1st. While the times are still to be firmed up, we're planning on the group meeting with congregational leadership, such as officers and board members in the late afternoon for about an hour or so. And then uh, uh, the meeting with the, uh, with the uh, members at large will be around six or so in the evening. If you're still interested in being a, on that member at large focus group, call the church office this week. Our service this evening is divine service setting four, printed in your bulletin or beginning on page 203 in our hymnals. We now begin the service with our opening hymn, hymn number 816. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. 
Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our intro it from Psalm 22. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth, earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, that he has done it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, mercifully look upon our infirmities and stretch forth the hand of your majesty to heal and defend us through Jesus Christ, 
your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading for this day comes from the prophet Isaiah in chapter 9. There will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson comes from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians in chapter 1. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. What I mean is that each one of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one may say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. And we rise to sing our response. The Holy Gospel, portions of which also serve as the basis for the sermon, is written in the fourth chapter of St. Matthew, beginning at the twelfth verse. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light. And for those dwelling in the region and the shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. While walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. 
And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. And he went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons, epileptics, and paralytics, and he healed them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis, and from Jerusalem and Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. We confess the Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The hymn of the day is hymn 839, and you may be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd invite you to open your Bibles with me to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4. In the Pew Bible, this is found on page 962. And to start, I'll read again verse 20. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And let us pray. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have cast your word through the ages, even down to us this day, so that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we might believe and embrace Jesus as our Redeemer. We pray, dear Lord, that you would bring us to true repentance for our sins, but also a true trust in our Savior from sin, so that we might follow him where he leads us throughout this life, knowing that he is taking us toward our heavenly home. Give us your comfort and peace, we pray, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, the baton had been passed. John, the forerunner, had proclaimed his word. He had prepared the way for Jesus to come. He had gone up against the, the religious leaders. He had gone up even against the king. He had called all to repentance. He had warned of the coming of the mighty one who would lay his axe at the root of the trees and cut down any tree that does not bear good fruit. John had a very powerful message, and it was a message that cost him. Eventually, it cost him his life. But in the meantime, as he had been carrying out his work, it's time now to pass that on. John is done. His time is coming to an end. Even as John said about himself regarding Jesus, he, Jesus, must increase and I must decrease. And as such then, John is arrested by King Herod, and that's where verse 12 of Matthew 4 picks up. When he, Jesus, heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee. This was not a running away from the issue. This is coming right after Jesus had been baptized and then taken off into the wilderness for temptation by the devil for 40 days. Jesus is now beginning his ministry, and interestingly enough, he is not going directly to the uh, suburbs or the big cities to start his work, but he's going up into Galilee, into the northern parts of Israel, what most of the elites and the, the highfalutin kind of folks would call flyover territory. Not worth our attention, low lifes and uh, hillbillies up there. And that's exactly where Jesus went to start his ministry. And so he, he leaving Nazareth, Nazareth, which was his hometown, he went and lived in Capernaum by the sea, at the top part of the Sea of Galilee. And of course, you've got all of you memorized, right, the map of Israel, so you know wherever all the spots are. Trust me, it's in the northern part. And you hear a lot about the Sea of Galilee because that's where the disciples, Peter, James, John, and Andrew, fished. And uh, that's where Jesus walked across the sea. And that's where the wind uh, was about to sink the disciples' boat. There's a lot that takes place up there in Galilee, in flyover country. And so uh, he went and lived in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali. Those were two of the tribes of, of Old Testament Israel in that region, so that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. And this is something I think we let go over our heads too often. How much do the scriptures tell us this happened to fulfill what God had said beforehand? It's like we think God's making it up as he goes along, or these things just kind of happened to Jesus, and it's not that at all. Everything here was carrying out that original promise of God to Adam and Eve that from the woman's seed would come the one who would crush the serpent's head, though he himself would also be crushed. The promise of a savior of sinners. The promise of the one who would deliver us from sin, death, and hell. And this is now unfolding in real time 2,000 years ago, and we shouldn't then just relegate it to a storybook that we put on the shelf. Because this affects us now. These things were written also for us now. 
And so this is what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, that it might be fulfilled. And then there's that quote that you heard earlier in the service from chapter 9. In the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, the way by the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. And in the Isaiah passage, it had talked about their humiliation. Because that whole northern region, 700 plus years before, was destroyed, annihilated by the Assyrians. There was practically nobody and nothing left. It was all having to be rebuilt. And it was all being rebuilt in very humble circumstances. And it is within that that Jesus comes to begin his work. In that which has been humbled, lowered, brought down, destitute, crying out for help, crying out for mercy. And here comes the helper and the merciful one to them. The people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light. And for those dwelling in the region and the shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. Or the Greek can also read, for them the light has dawned. And think about it. The very incarnate Son of God is now in their midst. The one who himself is the light of heaven has come to begin his saving work for them and for you and for me and for all. And so this light has shone or shined on them, has dawned upon them because it is happening in the person of Jesus himself for them. And so people now then tend to think, oh good, we got rid of that cranky head old John the Baptist with all his repent and watch out kind of language. And now we got gentle Jesus, meek and mild, coming to tell us all about love, right? Well, look what, what he did as soon as he takes up his mission in verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What? Wait a minute here. Isn't that harsh language? Isn't that... Isn't that intolerant and unaccepting of people's lifestyles and choices to say to repent? Not at all. Because there is no difference between the message of the Old Testament and the message of the New Testament. No difference between the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament. God throughout history is interested in our salvation. And God also knows that unless hearts are repentant, understanding their lost and sinful and dying condition, there's no way they would ever be ready for a Savior. No way they would ever be ready to embrace the one whom God had sent. And so as John the Baptist, preparing the way for the Lord, preaches repent, so also the Lord who has now come on the scene, this one who would bring end times kingdom of God among the people, even now, as Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, even now in his time, the kingdom of heaven is starting to work. God's reign over sin and all its consequences. A little bit later, after, after the calling of four of the disciples, we see all the things that Jesus was doing for the crowds, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel, healing every disease, every affliction among the people. His fame was spreading. They brought him the sick, the afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons and so on. Already, then and there, the kingdom of heaven had begun his work to be completed when Jesus comes again in glory. And it's still being carried out now among you. Yes, sometimes in physical healings, many times in raising of dead people through holy baptism. Those who were dead in their trespasses and sins are made alive in Christ. Sinners who... Uh, have a hard time seeing their lost condition are brought to realize that without Christ they have nothing and by the power of the Spirit they believe. Forgiveness of sins is, continues to pour out into the world even though the darkness tries to resist it. Even though sometimes the darkness of our own hearts tries to resist it. And yet the kingdom of heaven is it still at hand and the proclamation of law and gospel still goes out. Repent! And behold, the Lamb of God who takes away your sin, Jesus who died for you. And so sandwiched in between those two things was Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee, seeing Simon who was called Peter and Andrew his brother, they were fishermen, 
They were casting a net into the sea. And he said to them in verse 19, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Interesting. Taking what they knew already and applying it in a much different way. And their amazing thing is, immediately they left their nets and followed him. And the same thing occurred then with the, the, uh, the sons of Zebedee, James and John. When Jesus says, follow me, they immediately left the boat and their father and followed him. Why? Because Jesus chose them to be his disciples. He was going to prepare them. They, they probably had some exposure to him, but how much we don't know doesn't matter. Jesus called them and they, they followed. They still had families, they still had things, they still had vocations, but this became primary in their lives. They were going to be apostles, sent ones. They were going to be the ones who would carry on Jesus' work after his death, resurrection, and ascension. But you know, they simply continued to proclaim to the people like you and me, what Jesus has done. And that proclamation continues down to this very day. And Jesus, he has called you. Follow me, he said. Well, when did he do that? Well, when you were baptized, for sure. But every single time you hear the word of God, every single time Jesus is laid out before your eyes, your minds, and your heart, he is saying, follow me. Follow me. And God grant that we having received the forgiveness of sins and having had the light of Christ shine upon us in our darkness, having had the one who didn't just go to the, to the elites, but was willing even to come to us who live in flyover country to bring about his love and mercy and forgiveness. Let us indeed follow him in joy as he leads us toward our heavenly home. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep each of your hearts and minds in true faith to life eternal. Amen. We continue now with the prayer of the church. In our prayers this evening, we pray for Eva Duncan and Robin Fulkerson, who are both recovering from recent surgeries, and for strength and healing for Jerry Brady, Aaron Shu, and Vicki Schweigert. At the conclusion of our prayers, we continue then with the service of the sacrament. Let us rise for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that your word has been consistent throughout the ages, that word that calls sinners to repentance but also holds out before them the light of life. In the Old Testament, they were looking forward to the coming of your Son, who would bring about our redemption. And we now, who are your New Testament Christians, we see that having been brought about in real time, in history, among flesh and blood people, for us and for our salvation, as well as for the world's salvation. And so that message to calling us to repentance through the law and comforting us through the forgiveness of our sins in the gospel still is as, as necessary today for each one of us as it ever was. Let us not despise this word, O Lord, and this call to repent of our sins. Let us, not also, let us also not doubt the truth of your forgiveness for us in Christ, that we would not be weighed down by the devil's words or our own feelings, that tell us how far short of your glory that we have fallen, that it is impossible for us to get up, but rather may we take new courage each day in your word, as Christ has done all of this for us. And now, O Lord, as you have called us to follow you and to be your Christians, your dear children, so may we live out our vocations, whatever they may be in our daily lives, in true faith in Jesus, and living that life and light of Christ among those around us. Help us, O oh Lord, we pray. Be with Eva and Robin as they recover from their surgeries, and Jerry, Aaron, and Vicki in their illnesses. We commend them to you for your help and for your healing according to your will. We know, O oh Lord, that your grace is sufficient for them and that your strength is shown forth in their weakness, but we do pray your mercy on them that they might be restored in body once more.
We also pray, dear Heavenly Father, for your holy church throughout all the world, especially for your Christians suffering great persecution in other parts of this globe. Be with them in the midst of their suffering. Let them, O oh Lord, even as they lay down their lives for Christ, let that be used as a way to draw those who are persecutors and unbelievers to realize there is more to this life than just the things of this life, but that you indeed are our God and that you have sent a Redeemer for the world. We pray that that message may go into the hearts of many and draw them to you. In all these things, we commend ourselves to you, our bodies and souls and all things. Let your holy angel be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. As the glory of your presence once filled your ancient temple, so in the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, you manifested the fullness of your glory in human flesh. We give you thanks that in his most holy supper, you reveal your glory to us. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood so that we may one day behold your glory face to face. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and in soul unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
Our service continues with the singing of the Nook Dimittis, and we rise. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.